I'm uh, Ron Postuma. I'm an associate professor at McGill. I got interested in Parkinson's because I started off being interested in aging. And so Parkinson's disease is a disease of getting old. As we get old, we lose parts of ourselves, and Parkinson's disease is one type of that. So I started off being interested in not wanting to age, I suppose, uh, but then also thinking about, you know, what type of aging are most amenable uh, to, to fixing. Uh, I was interested initially in Alzheimer's, um, but I also really liked dealing with Parkinson's patients. And so because I was a clinical researcher, I was going to do both uh, seeing patients and doing the research in the same condition. I actually chose Parkinson's disease because there's a lot that one can do for Parkinson's. So I work a lot with um, directly with patients, and I have a f with patients. It's a variety. There's a few things that I do. One of the most successful areas has been to work with um, prediction of Parkinson's disease. So the idea is that uh, by the time you show up in a doctor's office with Parkinson's disease, you've actually had it for ten. 15, even 20 years, it's been in your brain all that time doing its work slowly. Um, we don't have preventative therapy against Parkinson's disease. We don't have therapy to slow down the underlying aging process. Maybe one of the reasons we don't have that is because we're starting too late. Um, so if we could find patients early, we would be able to test and then ultimately, once we have the therapy, go out and find these patients and, and treat them early in the course of the disease and prevent it. My other interest is finding quick, practical solutions for problems that we think are tractable. So um, many people work on tremor and slowness, and uh, but uh, there's less work in general on all the non-motor aspects of Parkinson's, so sleep problems and blood pressure problems and mood problems and the like. And there's actually quite a long list of these. And so I like to sort of pick off one at a time, uh, think of a thing that I think would work, test it to see if it does, and then if it does, that's an, another thing in the arsenal against Parkinson's. We were actually looking at questionnaires to validate uh, that we could put in the clinic and have people, you know, detect all these non-motor things that they may forget to answer to their doctor. And so as a result of having to do that research project, we had to create something that they could use once they answered yes to all the questions. And that has actually turned into a booklet that is now all over the place where patients now, much, much beyond the research, have in their pockets a, a guide that tells them how to deal with constipation, how to deal with orthostatic hypertension and hallucinations and, and the very long list. And, and that, I don't think that really existed before the research project started. So the research talked right back to education as well. There's a lot to know about Parkinson's disease. And to be honest, it is more than a typical family doctor would be able to absorb, not because they're not smart, but because they have to deal with diabetes and cancer and high blood pressure and everything like that. So in fact, I thought the most important thing that could be done was taking the information directly to the patient, who then could trigger to the family doctor that, hey, I have an issue here, and then the family doctor would have the knowledge or the means to access that knowledge. So yes, we created a patient a patient pamphlet and a physician pamphlet as well. I would regard the patient pamphlet as being far more important. So I started off as a, as a clinician um, wanting to explore Parkinson's research and my first uh, funding um, was from Parkinson Canada. I initially had funding to do my clinical training in Parkinson's disease and later on I got my first grant uh, was uh, from the Parkinson Canada uh, working actually on caffeine and Parkinson's disease which ended up being a, a much bigger study than it started off being. And so that's I think one important role, getting people started who aren't ready for the million dollar grants, who aren't yet proven. Uh, to be able to handle those grants, getting them started, getting them published, uh, establishing uh, junior researchers. I think that's a big role that Parkinson Canada does. Everyone thinks Parkinson's is tremor, okay? Uh, it's not. <laughs> Most tremors are not Parkinson's disease, in fact, the large majority are not. Parkinson's is a big disease. It has a lot of things associated with it. And so uh, with my patients, I'm always very careful to go through a lot of things that they may not be aware of that are part of Parkinson's disease. Because if we're not aware of them, then we miss the opportunity to treat them. Uh, Parkinson's in general is, is on the cusp of big advances, I think. Uh, we may have major breakthroughs in the next few years. Um, 
And uh, so it's an exciting time to be in Parkinson's research. So there's real hope that something very significant will happen in the next few years. For me, the thing that keeps me going is the constant back and forth. Um, so because I see patients and because I do research that's very clinically related, so everything I do in my research talks back to my clinic and everything I do in my clinic talks directly back to my research. So there's this constant back and forth that I have, learning as I go in both ways. So what I learn in research, I apply quite quickly to my patients, but my patients also give ideas for new research because they mention something that maybe I hadn't thought of or you know, they notice a new symptom that that I have and after a while you start to pick out a pattern and through that pattern you start to get an idea and then you test that idea. So what really keeps me going is, is, is the constant interaction back and forth between my research and my patients. There's a lot of hope in Parkinson's disease. Um, I mean people may not realize it but among all the diseases in neurology it's probably among the most treatable. Uh, there's a lot we can do for a Parkinson patient. Now it's an aging related disease, the aging eventually does take over, but there's a long time in the middle when things can be a whole lot better. Uh, so that's the most important thing about Parkinson's, that you can really make it better. And that's why I really enjoy working in it. Parkinson Canada, it does two things really, advocacy, education, and the research as well. I, I think it plays a very important role. Um, there are other funding agencies, but there aren't a lot of other smallish grant funding agencies. And I think that's an important role for the Parkinson's disease uh, societies in general to, to sort of look at things that, you know, look at uh, projects that may be left by the wayside, uh, smaller things, smaller ideas that can turn into big ones. Uh, diversity is very important. We can't just cluster into one spot because then it's groupthink. We need to have lots of, lots of feelers all over the place and, and then we get a hit and we follow that up. That's how research works. There's a lot of volunteer effort that goes into the reviewers of, of, of the research that we get. So the way it works essentially is that all around the country people submit their research ideas and a panel of people with expertise in basic science or clinical research or, or genetics or whatever it would be all sit together in a room and essentially decide which of the ones are the ones that are most exciting that have the most chance to lead to an important new advance in Parkinson's disease. Um, and this is all volunteer labor. It's actually a lot of work uh, to go through carefully everyone's idea, see if it's a good one, see if it's probably not going to work, and then uh, going through the difficult process, the very difficult process of, of ranking the, the best. Um, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see great ideas um, that just don't meet the cutoff. And if we can keep dropping our cutoff, in other words, have more and more projects funded, we're going to get a lot more diversity and more new ideas into the research community. What we need is we need enough money to fund the research of Parkinson's disease. It's simple as that. It, nothing's free. And, you know, we need to turn the lights on. We need to hire the people. We need to uh, run the gene counters. We need to you know, buy the reagents. We need to do, we need to pay for the patient's parking when they come in to, to, to see us. All of these things are, are essential. We can't do research without them. And so we need funds. We need support in order to, to do our job. You play an important role. You're part of something bigger than just us, you and me. You're part of a bigger process. Um, one of the biggest things that our society is doing is reducing the burden of disease. And it's an exciting thing to be part of. Um, keep joining. Thank you for being part of it.